without further ado, we ha- I have Zach Faisal and Matt, Matt Jakubowski. Please give them a warm round of applause. Already? This is PCI HIPAA and you, right? Can you guys hear me on this mic because I don't hear any feedback? No? Barely. Barely? No? Sweet. Yeah, now I hear myself, which isn't a good thing. So before I get started, I made a uh, drunken promise, and I'm a man of my word. So a buddy of mine who I met in the bar last night uh, has a first-gen iPhone he would like to sell, and this is the perfect market for it. $150, uh, Twitter T. Kimball, K-I-M-B-A-L-L. Um, yeah, I stand up to my promises. I was drunk. Anyways, moving on. Um, PCI, HIPAA, and you, we're going to get started with Femtocell Insecurities. Um, I figured we'd scare off the people who are just kind of casually poking their head in. Uh, hi, I'm Zach Faisal. This is Matt Lord Jakubowski. Jacku. Jacku. Lord. So, Lord. Cool. Um, so I like to start off every talk I kind of give with a heads up as to what this talk is about and um, what it's not. Because if you want to sit here for the next 45 minutes to an hour, uh, I don't want you to sit here and be swearing my name after the talk going, why did I stay? So, first of all, what this talk is about. We're going to be talking about distributed wireless communication devices, a.k.a. an acronym I made up called FemtoCells. We tried to keep the name kind of different so it didn't scream. Um, we're going to do a quick overview of cell technologies. You've got to know how cell phones work in order to take and uh, Wow, that light is moving. Ooh, look at the light. Um, we've got to do an overview of cell technologies to understand you know, how these FemtoCells work. For GSM and CDMA, since those are the two uh, products out here in the States. We're going to talk about how the femtocells work, a um, little bit about hardware hacking, security implications of femtocells, and what we found on femtocell insecurities. Um, what this talk is not. We're not going to just say potentially, theoretically, maybe, sort of, kind of, but I will say the word potentially a lot, because there's a lot of things I can't do legally, and I won't do those things legally. Illegally. <laughs> I was waiting for a schmooball. T- Thank you. <laughs> I hand out this many and no one, yeah. Oh, and by the way, fake vendor specific balls, not schmooballs, but vendor specific lookalikes are up here if you want some. Feel free to abuse them. Um, so, yeah, this is not some, oh, God. This is not, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> An- I, mobile disco. <laughs> I, oh, oh. And that's it. I'm out. <laughs> All right, cool. And it's not a elite zero-day talk. I'm not going to be releasing, dropping some big zero-day bomb on you. Um, what? Oh, throw like a girl. I was like, I'm a girl? What? What did I do now? Um, we're not going to talk about how to cross into gray areas of the law. And this is not our old talk, Gentleman's Agreement Part 2. Most importantly, this is not a sales talk brought to you by Trustway Spy Labs, a leading source of security services and products with over 9,000 served. I, yeah, I'm moving on. So who, yeah, who we are and such. Uh, hi, I'm Zach Faisal. I'm breezing through this slide very fast because everyone hates these slides, but they're necessary in a PowerPoint. I'm going to drag mine Thank on. you. Jack is going to actually talk about himself. I'm Matt Jakubowski. I work at Trustwave. Don't throw smooth balls at me. All right, and <laughs> on a serious note, though, if anybody knows where McDonald's gets their McRibs, please let me know. Chicago. Where in Chicago? I know they're in Chicago. He wants a bulk supply. I want a bulk supply. All right, and last, last and final plug. I'm sorry. These have to get done. No, they don't, but ThoughtCon, um, me and Jack, who are helping run it with two other awesome people. Uh, we're having a hacker con in Chicago in a bar, kind of off of You Shot the Sheriff, which is also an awesome con. Um, if you're ever wanting to go internationally, head out to uh, YSTS. April 23rd, Chicago. We won't be disclosing the location unless you buy a ticket. Uh, no tickets at the door, obviously, before that reason. It's going to be a bar somewhere in the city uh, available by public transportation. Come on out. Here's the people we got talking. As you can see, Heidi and Bruce are making their way out. Um, and a few other awesome, awesome people. And a few people who have never talked before, which is kind of cool. Um, so it's a good mix. And if it, the talk suck, you can drink more. So, again, last obligatory slide, don't be stupid. Cool? 
Uh, some of the stuff we're talking about today, if you push it further and further and further and further and further, could be used to violate FCC, other federal, local, state laws, et cetera. You don't want the Verizon guy jumping out of a helicopter saying, you've been served, can you hear me now? Uh, so don't be stupid. Um, so yeah, we're going to really quick talk about the cell technologies here in the States, because that's what I care about. I live here in the U.S. Um, I know, very American of me, right? Um, just to bring you up to speed really quick. So really in cell architecture, there's three major points. Um, you got your mobile station. Again, there's all these sub points, but I don't have time to go through all of them. So you have your mobile station, you have your base station subsystem, which is your radio towers, your radio tower controllers, etc. Excuse me. And then your network and switching subsystem. This is kind of the back of house, you know, back of the data centers and the regional areas. That actually connects you to the POTS networks and the data networks. Those are the three major parts of a cell architecture. Don't get me wrong, there's more sub, 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 sub parts for each of the individual parts, and there may be more additional major parts, but this is what we care about for femtocells. Here in the States, there's two big players, in the G or two big technologies. In the GSM market, we've got AT&T and T-Mobile, don't get me wrong, there's a bunch of other players. In CDMA, we've got Verizon Sprint and US Cellular, and Boost Mobile, but they aren't worthy enough to be on there. Ooh. For cell frequencies, we've got three major ranges. We've got the 800, 850, and 1900 range. Uh, this is for CDMA and GSM. Uh, these are the frequencies. Enough said. And we kind of need to know how these cell phones actually communicate and talk. If you want to know more about GSM, yeah, GSM, they didn't do CDMA. The GSM handshake, the GSM encryption. Um, honestly, go buy the DVD that says GSM seriously. Don't wait until it's out on the ShmooCon website in six months or so, whenever it comes out. Um, go help support uh, the guys who are doing the video here. It's awesome. It's not expensive. The GSM Seriously Talk is an awesome talk, some awesome cutting stuff when it comes to cell uh, encryption, decryption, etc. But so this is the basic GSM handshake. You've got your mobile station, your base station, and your network and switching system. Uh, basically, the mobile station says, hey, here's my serial number, my IMSI. On the back end, the, the NSS basically gives a random number to make this session unique. The result of encrypting that random number and KC, which is going to be the encryption key used for this system. Now, that encryption key used for this current session is based on the private key of the phone that both the MS and the NSS know. Good? Got it? Follow so far? Cool. I could have made it more visual, but I was lazy and did these slides yesterday. So basically, it sends it to the base station. The base station sends only the random number to the mobile station. The mobile station then goes, all right, cool. I got a random number. I'm going to encrypt this random number, basically create a hash and run through my algorithm. I'm going to get KC, which you know too, because obviously we both know our, my own private key, and a response, which is a hash value of the random number. I'm going to send the response back to you saying, hey, this is what I got. We cool? And then we start talking. Um, and we set up e encryption optionally. Optionally. I'll touch on that in a second. UMTS, A53, and HSPDA. DPA, PDA, I'm tired. Um, same basic thing, but it's a little different. Now, in GSM, basically just the handset authenticates with the system, but the system doesn't authenticate with the handshake. So I could just go ahead and use my phone on non-3G and connect to any system that accepts me, which is awesome, right? Uh, so basically in HS UMTS A53, the NSS actually gives an AUTM, which is the authentication for the network which is basically, again, a hash value based on that random number and the private key. Sends it to the phone with the random number. That way the mobile station goes, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, the hash checked out on my end, you're good. Here's my response. And, again, the handshake. What's interesting to note here is actually encryption is native on this for HSPDA. And the encryption, from what I've read, again, if I'm wrong, please correct me, um, is between the NSS and the MS, not the base station. I'm waiting for someone to, no? Right? Cool, awesome. So for encryption, there's four basic types for GSM. A50, which is non-encryption. A51, which, again, the GSM seriously talk. I'm sorry I keep plugging them, but awesome work, guys. Um, broken, there's rainbow tables out there. A52 is the weak sauce version of A51 for export. And A53 is going to be that HSPDA stuff uh, and UNTS stuff. There's papers that just came out recently that says it's being broken, and I don't know how academic -y they were getting broken or if they actually had a really proof of concept, but I'll believe it when I actually see it, just like the A51. So that's all kinds of awesome. CDMA is a little different here. Um, 
a little more complicated of a handshake here. So I'm going to try to explain this as easily as possible, and I'm sorry for all the missing arrows. Again, yesterday. So the ESM and MIN get sent all the way to the NSS. That, again, is the serial number of this phone. The switching substation, or the network switching substation, station, or, yeah, sends back a random number, which is to generate the encryption for that session, an authentication, and a random, another random number to validate that uh, uh, random generated key. I'll touch on that in a second here. Sends the random SSD to generate the encryption key, sends a random number, it responds back with the auth u, which is the response using that new generated random encryption key, and then the data is encrypted there. This is how the keys generate in CDMA. It's a little more of a pain than GSM, um, A51. So basically, this is where you can see all the things that the RAND SSD goes into this uh, key generator, along with the ESN and the A key, which is the private key of the phone, whirls it all up, gives you the SSD, which gives you two parts, and then the 64-bit auth U is what the response actually is. I know it's confusing, but it's just we got to get through it just to touch on it. Cool. So femtocells what? So what are femtocells? So femtocells are basically in-home devices used by the cell companies or being sold now or leased or whatever they're going to do with them to provide cellular service to a phone without any kind of new technology for the mobile user. Basically, the three, three big players here in the U.S. have done them um, to basically, if you're sitting in the middle of the 10th floor of a building in a data center with concrete walls on all sides that are six inches thick, um, you're not going to get cell service in there, obviously. Basically, this will help you provide cell service in there via IP. So it'll create an IP session back to the cell company and then rebroadcast a cellular signal on those 800, 850, and 1900 bands for your phone to use. Your phone works on them. They know them. The uh, femtocell helps you be able to then use a service without having to get a new handset like the, uh, I believe it's T-Mobile that does the Wi-Fi based one, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, provide cell service in areas you can't use it, and it's a big growing area. So how growing? Um, there's a report out by the ABI research study which says there will be 32 million ex femtocell access points worldwide. They also call a femtocell access, access point a FAP. FAP, FAP, FAP. I don't know how much I trust them. Um, purely on that reason, I don't trust them. Um, but so basically, um, it's kind of interesting numbers, and I don't know if I believe that yet based on the way the market's going so far, but it's, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Um, I'm not going to say it's not going to hit that number. I'm not going to say it is. We'll see in 2011. War is beginning. But there's another uh, big, everyone wants a piece of the share, including Magic Jack. Now for 1995, all you have to, yeah. Um, they're trying to do a femtocell, and I'll touch on that in a second, and the scary things with that. So what does the consumer see with a femtocell? What do they actually care about? How do I plug it in, and how does it give me my phone? Um, basically, you plug it in your network and give it power, and it does all the handshake stuff for you. Um, but how does it actually work that we care about? So basically, this is the slide from Samsung's version of it. Uh, this is how their cellular system works, or uh, femtocell system works. Basically, the femtocell, which in Samsung's world is called the ubicell, um, acts as the BTS and BSC of the BSS, the base station, the radio towers, right? It then, over IP, which is an IPsec tunnel actually all the way back, connects to the security gateway. Security gateway on the outside is just a big fancy word for VPN concentrator. Um, then on the inside, it's got all the interconnections to the voice lines and then the provisioning lines for the actual modem so it can get its configuration information and also all the gateways for data management, et cetera. So, what are these made of? There are three vendors, two products, and one... We good? Thank you. Just like calling people out. No worries. I don't, if you need to take it, I mean, we could take it. Put them on speaker, that's cool. Motherfucker. Is it your mom? Anyways, I'm sorry, I'm killing time. You all want to get beers tonight, so we'll get going. Um, so there's two major, or three vendors, two products, and one group of hackers here in the U.S. Well, there's more, but yeah. So you have vendor A and vendor SV. Uh, vendor A for GSM and vendor SV for CDMA. Well, if you take S and consummate Vs, you get Trogdor. So we're going to call them vendor A and vendor Trogdor for the time being. 
I don't like calling it SV. It's just kind of weird. So this is vendor Trogdor's product. Um, I'll let you draw any conclusion you want to. Um, basically, so the processor is a TIO Map 1710. You may see a lot of these processors if you're a hardware person in a lot of cell phones and a lot of other communication devices. What they're running on that OMAP 10 is a Linux 2.6 based kernel and system based on BusyBox. That's why it got very interesting for me when I saw the DHCP request. Yeah. They got two Samsung SBM 1320s of the radio controllers, two MX FE 80, 90, 9861. You guys really, who actually cares about the hardware? Sweet, I'll keep going through it. So uh, the GPS is a uh, serial based GPS by Trimble. There's an FPGA on the board. Uh, we weren't able to figure out exactly what it does, but based on documentation um, from various fem to cell providers, it looks like it either does timing calculations or encryption. Ooh, that gives me an idea. The network's a uh, Realtek network adapter, and there's an HDMI interface on the bottom. No, it does not hook up your TV. We asked Best Buy if, if my TV was uh, fem to cell capable. They said no. Um, <laughs> but there's other fun stuff with it. This is Vendor A's product. Uh, I'll let Jack talk about Vendor A since he's the one who did a lot of the work tearing them apart. Sit down. Yes, sir. All right. So Vendor A was a lot of fun. Um, but it's a Pico chip um, inside using uh, another serial-based GPS unit by Realtek. Um, it's also FPGA. Again, we don't know if it's doing the encryption or timing-based stuff. Um, Realtek. Network adapter, and then the interesting thing on there was the pin headers on the boards. Um, after a night in a hotel, we were able to get serial off of that pretty well. Um, we'll touch on that in a moment, I think. Uh, although the nice thing about vendor A is that they actually had some tamper detection um, jumpers on the board, so that when you cracked open the case, if you weren't careful, you would have uh, most likely wiped the entire device. Unfortunately for them, they didn't know that lost Mystery Challenge contestants were going to be opening up their hardware. <laughs> and if any of you are familiar with Lost Mystery Challenge, you know what I'm talking about. All right, security considerations by Zach. That was fun. So here, in Femto Cells, there's really three major areas that, as an attacker, you're going to be looking at. You're going to be looking at the network connection, either on the LAN or the WAN side. You're going to be looking at the femtocell itself, and you're going to be looking at the MSs, the mobile stations or devices. Or can I just call them cell phones from here on in? Cool. No. So there's four risks I could easily think of other than Bill Gates. Um, first of all, theft of service. If these are, aren't properly secured, you could easily get free service from vendor A or vendor Trogdor. Um, Privacy-wise, if it's a GSM-based one, you could turn into easily an IMSI catcher. For those who don't know what an IMSI catcher is, if you notice, I'm just handing out, again, go to the GS, take the GSM seriously, CD if you're interested, or DVD. Um, hey, you know, you're passing me your IMSI saying, I want to join your network, I want to join your network, I want to join your network. Well, IMSIs are unique to each person. No, it's not your cell phone number, it's a unique identifier. Excuse me, on top of that. So... You can set up basically triangulation of IMSIs and figure out where people are and track them based on that. That would be interesting if we could get one to do that. Um, you can also use the device outside of its legal limits, aka forging GPS information to go somewhere else, such as Mexico, and get nice cellular service from back in the States in Mexico. Uh, you could also potentially, again, We'll touch on this intercept data part, but if a femtocell was compromised and the encryption was being done on the femtocell and knew the keys of the phones, you could intercept data potentially. Potentially. So the good. There's always good things to talk about other than Chipotle. Um, they um, took in uh, on these devices, they're all VPN tunneled across the land. So there's a lot of good security in that. They're using a site-to-site -site pre shared key and, certi and or certificate, depending on the vendor, VPN tunneling. So sniffing the traffic's not going to get you much other than a DHCP request um, and the handshake for the VPN. The hardware tamper pins that Jack was talking about, yeah, I mean, it's a step. Um, the firewall policies on the devices are really hardened, and it's also kind of in combination with the VPN tunneling. The way the routes are set up is that uh, nothing on the network can talk to it because it's not going to route back. Um, all the routes are defaulted out, except for the gateway. So if you go to the gateway, you can talk to the devices still. 
and get by the firewall. But there's not much, you know, in the way of services running on them. Um, we'll touch on what we did find on the services running on them. And on one of the devices, we noticed they were using SSH tunnels or stunnels, uh, the SSL version of it, to connect to the services on the back end of house. So now the part, everyone who actually came here There's to see. There's a question. We did not test the validation of certificates and any SSL, TLS vulnerabilities against those certificates. But there is client-side certificates on them. So the bad. There's always the bad. <laughs> Poor Moose. This image may be graphic for some users after I've exposed it to you. Um, <laughs> Shmoo, kind Don't of let Bruce I searched Heidi Moose see. dead, and this is what came up. Don't let Bruce First hit. <laughs> By the car and Google. Um, so yeah, on vendor Trogdor, uh, there was a web interface that was accessible again only from the gateway. Now, it was an HTTP-based interface, and I spent five minutes guessing the password. Wow, that's the password. No, I'm not going to tell you it. No, 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 no. We're not doing... <laughs> I have to check. Hold on. No. <laughs> Damn it. Now I just gave it away. Um... No, but we, we were able to take and, you know, using just guess and check and kind of, you know, smart knowledge of if I was the guy writing this, what would I do? Oh, yeah, there it is. I'm in. Um, yeah. Again, I'm not going to zero-day release it. Uh, and also, there's not much you can do in this web interface other than get the VPN credentials for the pre-shared key and the authentication for that device. Uh, and also, you can change some settings such as the uh, network ID for the cell network. Every cell tower has a network ID, which basically says, hi, I'm vendor A, hi, I'm vendor B. Um, so you can change that information. You can also change the gain of the tower, the handoff sequence from the femto cell to the rest of the network, et cetera. Um, and yeah, uh, also on the bottom of vendor trogdors was a um, HDMI interface, which was questionable. But uh, after checking about all 19 pins, we noticed a bunch of 3.3 volt lines. Obviously, if you're a hardware guy, you're going to know that's a lot of most of the communication, especially serial on uh, raw serial buses. What well, we found it. Um, there's a raw serial interface on the HDMI interface of this, so you don't even have to open the device like I did with a screwdriver and a hammer. Uh, I know it's plastic, but yeah, I chiseled it. Um, so we did see uh, the raw serial interface. We saw the login, but we couldn't log in. These guys actually did some security on it, but don't get me wrong, we got physical, we could probably take a look at the memory. I'm not a Uber hardware guy. I can't take and desolder the uh, you know, uh, memory chip off of it, put it in something else, take a look and do memory analysis of it. That's not my gig. Um, so this is kind of also, if someone else wants to take a look at it, come see me after having a beer or two and we'll chat. Um, but yeah, so we did not get rid of this device, but we got a nice little pretty interface and uh, took a look at the interface, couldn't get rid through that. But yeah, so I mean, that's what's going on with vendor Trogdor in the bad. Um, so yeah, Jack is now going to talk about vendor A's stuff. <laughs> so vendor A again, um, good physical security, but, but not good network, not network, physical, I don't know. Physical with tamper, but not so much on the connecting to serial. Um, the U-boot loader, I could get right into and interrupt the process. Um, we couldn't do that on vendor VS. I don't follow, yeah, I don't follow that. Um, they, they did a little bit of difference, but anyways, on vendor A, we were able to get into it, and of course, single user mode it. Um, I know that's not leak, and I know, oh, yay, single user, you got root, that's easy. Um, what we were able to get out of that, though, was actually get the device back online with single user mode and have it actually talk back to the network like it should. Um, we found a lot of fun files on there, made some LEDs blink. Um, overall, it was a lot of fun because we found a lot more information than we thought we could. Um, it has all sorts of passwords and VPN keys that are just, should not be there. Um, the good news is though, once it makes a VPN connection, it does kind of get the certificates it needs so they're not on there by default and it downloads them and deletes them almost immediately after making a connection. So it's kind of weird, but kind of good security on that. Um, I think we have a demo next. How long are we going to time? 30 minutes. Five, three, four, yeah. three. What? Who wants me to go the full, or us to go the full hour, or who wants, well, who wants to go full hour, or who wants to get beers? Full hour? 
God damn it, I want a beer. Two hours. We'll do two hours. Whatever. Boop. Ah! Can, hey, hey, don't throw at me. It's him. Watch the demo. Are we done? <laughs> Can we play Nice Children? Okay. Hold on a second. Let me... Who doesn't? Yeah, I know. So we're going to do it from here because it's easier to full screen. I think I can pause it. Yeah. So right there is, you know, you boot bootloader. Um, I'm about to interrupt it at four seconds. And I can set the environment to go to single. You can see the word single right after that. Had it copied. And then run boot flash. Or boot run. Yeah, boot flash. From there, starts the, what, starts the Linux kernel, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Way too many. All right, um, so right now I'm running another uh, a script that it uses to finish the rest of the processes to get it back on the network. Um, that takes a few seconds, and then it's back in. Um, about four seconds, five seconds or so, you see I'm root and ID. Again, this was just a demo to show that we have root. Um, not showing many things on there because there's not too much to show right now. Uh, still kind of a work in progress, but root and ID. How do I do this thing? No, and then that does some other crazy stuff. I'll explain it because he's tired. I am tired. Grandpa's old. Um. <laughs> wow. I'm I expecting from him. Yeah, those Jeez. should be directed at me right now. Okay, so what you're. I'll explain a little bit more. So, what you're seeing there is basically after finding the serial pin headers on the board um, and determining through the bus pirate, uh, which is an awesome, cool hardware hacking device, or just hardware in general if you're making little um, Arduino projects, which are so much fun. Um, basically what you're seeing is that the serial, the boot up sequence of it. We were able to find a raw serial that as the device powered on was spewing all the boot information on there. And by interrupting the bootloader process, kind of like Grub or F8 in Windows, keep tapping, keep tapping, keep tapping, um, you're able to take and get into the bootloader. And once you're in the bootloader, you can basically say, hey, uh, I'm going to switch over to single user and I'm logged in. Who asked, who asked that? Was that... I'm just wondering. Okay, cool. Good? Kosher. Um, I, I think we'll do a live live demo, maybe? Is it going to work? Screw, I'll try. I, I hope I don't short out the board like I did last time. Oh, yeah, so in, in this process of finding this, we want to recognize and have a moment of silence, since you're all so quiet as it is already. Uh, two devices that died as a result of our testing. I, I like to uh, recognize Vendor S's device. He died. Yeah. Trogdor. Well, Trogdor. One of the Trogdor devices. Um, he died after taking 12 volts when he only expected five. <laughs> please, please, please. This is a serious moment. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. No live demo! Let me make sure it's okay. <laughs> Rest in peace, moment of silence. <laughs> it, Anyways, and then also... This uh, was the one that died. Yeah. And then also our uh, USB to serial adapter. <laughs> the first one. Um, this one was not my fault. It's kind of your fault. You were in the way. <laughs> uh, for the record, um, VDD does not equal transmit on a uh, device, or receive on a device. And when you uh, take VDD and shove it into a serial device at five volts, it smokes. <laughs> it went out with a bang. Receive did still work. Yeah, it did, it did. It just, <laughs> I guess we, we, we should remember that he lost his leg, but can still kind of, you know, scoot around a little bit. Oh, wow, that was wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, Shmoo him. All right, so we're going to try to get this to work. Right. I make no guarantees or assumptions because I did not test at any way, shape, or form. 
<laughs> oh. oh. I should probably do this off screen first. That might be beneficial to my health. All right, so what I'm doing now, I don't know if the guys at home can hear me. Um, hey, and by the way, I, I live demo, no more schmoo balls. I don't want to try another one because I have cables just dangling here. We all got our system. Cool, we got our system. Um, I'll just talk loudly. <laughs> I am doing a live demo. I could just mount it. I'm just being lazy. No. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow, I feel so honored. Ah, ah. I feel s I feel closer to you than I've ever felt before. <laughs> if you guys can all close your eyes for a second. <laughs> the cameras can't close eyes. Don't watch Daddy. Pseudo that shite. <laughs> How about them apples? Um, if I can get it to fucking work. Hey, watch your mouth. Oh, I know I should. Sorry, I, I think there's a big M letter on the Shmoocon site. Oh, yeah, it worked. Woo! Maybe. Part of um, it. Um. You gotta plug in the HDMI now. I need to change the font size so people can read. Um, how do you? Ch you guys in the back are kosher with it? Sweet. All right. So what we have set up? Oh yeah. Thanks. I'll just yeah. Sit down. Have a beer. It's cool. So what we have here is we've got the bus pirate right now plugged in and nothing hooked up to it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect ground and uh, receive, which is transmit on the board, receive on the bus pirate. Um, into this little HDMI cable that, again, lost soul, cut in half. Um, I felt so dirty doing that, by the way. Taking the HDMI cable I paid 30 bucks for because I couldn't wait for one off the internet and going, shit. God, I feel dirty. Um, so, hold this. Now I have two mics. Oh, God, that's a bad idea. <laughs> We're trying this out. We'll see if this works. So, this is... I am plugging in the HDMI port. This is like a report I did where they're like, explain everything. What are you doing right now? What am I doing right now? I'm waiting for this thing to power on. What are you doing now? I'm still waiting. Um, okay, cool. I think I've isolated the wires so it doesn't short anything out. Cool. Uh, let's turn this thing on and hope it doesn't short. Or if it does, it might look oh, cool. Oh, I see smoke. Oh, I didn't even set up the device yet. That would help. So on the bus pirate, so for those of you who have never used a bus pirate before, um, I'm going to try to do this. I don't have it mirrored. But basically, oh, is it not working now? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Pwned. No, oh, it's working. Hold on. I probably just hit the wrong key and my fingers are off home. I learned how to type. So basically with the bus pirate, which is a really cool device um, that we just happen to have in our bag after we shorted the one out. Um, basically, you, you enter. What? Eric's. Eric. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Eric. Is he actually in here? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's in the back. Chilling in the back corner. How's it going, man? His throw can't reach this. Far. Um, good. Uh, <laughs> open product. Please don't. Uh, so basically, when the bus pirate, we're gonna boot. We booted it up. When it boots up, it's like, hey, how's it going? I'm not gonna connect to anything yet. Basically, starts up all the inner inputs and outputs on high resistance, so it can't really short it out. This isn't a bus pirate presentation. I'll speed up. Oh, it's 540. I got another 10 minutes to draw this out because the people want to go an hour. Um, draw you out. So basically, you select the serial mode, select the speed, select what it is, stop it. I can't even read what that says. Oh, polarity. Cool. And whether or not you want to open up the transmit or if you want to keep it as uh, high Z, which is... Um, High resistance. And I want to open it up. And then I'm going to go ahead and say I want to get interactive. And wait, what? 
What the f- I can't see. Oh, space continues. Yeah, that's what it should say. I apologize. The internet requests what? A larger, well, click. Dear Tubes, um, I apologize. I wanted to actually have it streaming on the side here so I could see what they're saying about me behind my back because they all think, he can't see what I'm typing right now. Yeah, no. Um, that didn't happen in time. Bigger. I guess that, no. Yeah, that works. Cool. Bigger. Cool. That's what she said. Is this big enough for you, Internet? Um, hopefully. Let's try booting this thing up. Try. Oh, I hit the wrong. I know I did it wrong. I apologize. Better. My bad. I am doing it wrong. I always hear that. <laughs> I came out of the womb hearing that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Faisal. We had to do a cesarean because you're doing it wrong. <laughs> All right, this one is 57 to 6, not 11 5 2. I apologize. Cool, cool. And we're going to open up transmit if I don't want to do that. And we're going to go ahead and enable macro one. Want to run it? Cool. Let's see if it works now. Probably nothing, but we'll see. Fail. Yeah, I am full of fail today. Probably on the wrong pin. Hold on. Don't fry another one. I'm trying not to. Yeah, that's the right one there. Fact. Yes, at the Schmookon party, rounds on me between. What time does it start? <laughs> seven? Yeah? Seven, yes. Between seven and whenever open bar closes. Midnight. I'll just. It's, ooh, wow. I thought it was midnight last year. <laughs> oh, hell no. I don't see smoke. Ah! Ah! We'll restart. Why? Yeah. Because I can. So, give me my mic back. Oh, wait, no, that's yours. This is my mic. You can't have it. Ladies and gentlemen, if this. Wow, yeah. Wow. I restarted and it stops and working. What the now f- it's broken. <laughs> yeah, they see it. Cool. Done. <laughs> tell, tell I know this demo just took forever. I apologize. This is why I was like, I shouldn't do this demo. Moving on, because I got nine minutes left until I have to open up for Q&A. <sighs> Good that overlaid. Cool. The ugly. <laughs> Guys, I got a great idea. A larger eye touch. I, yeah, whatever. iPod touch, same thing. Kind of different. And we can make more money off of it by not including a webcam. Oh. All right, so the real ugly. How many people followed CES? Sweet. How many heard about Magic Jacks, Femtocell? You saw it? I am scared shitless about it. Did you try it out? You have one. They're selling them now? BlackRock, BlackRock, we have the device. <laughs> I want one. Let's talk. What's your name? I'm Zach. Hi. <laughs> Can I get you a beer? So anyways, the th- scary thing about Magic Jack. Um, I don't know much about the product yet because much details haven't gotten to me yet. Um, but what's really scary is if more manufacturers like to go this route... The only thing about Magic Jack is, so as you saw on those handshakes, and that's why I went through all that time of explaining the handshakes and how it authenticates and how the encryption sets up, you've got to know the encryption key of the phone. You can't negotiate it. It's not like SSL where you can be like, oh, here's my public key. Oh, here's my public key. Sweet. Let's talk. Um, They're pre-shared keys. You don't know your pre-shared key. So with a Magic Jack, you'd either have to, I'm, I'm assuming, okay, I haven't read much, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that it's GSM based. Yes? Yes? Sweet! I guessed one thing right. And that it doesn't use encryption because it can't, or you have to swap SIM cards. You don't have to swap SIM cards. I don't know about the encryption, but I'll show you a close-up of the uh, magic jack. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You're going to break the stage. I know I am. 
feel like the kids at Fant Camp. Uh, Shrew me. <laughs> You're all out of balls, aren't you? Open product. Open product. Open. Pro- kill the power. Kill the power. <laughs> I plugged the wrong thing. (laughs) 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 Mommy! Ow. We gave a bunch of balls out at the start. That was right in the eye. (laughs) God, I I need to be like the Bluetooth dude last year with sunglasses. Now I understand why. God. Okay, anyways, back to what we were actually talking about. I'm really concerned about this because unless you know the encryption keys, you have to disable encryption because it's a pre-shared key on the NSS side and the MS side. So that means the Magic Jack Femme Cell, if it follows everything I'm assuming here right now, it doesn't encrypt the airwaves. It's an open call. So that means any device connects to it, meaning if I hack it, I could just get other phones to join in and be like, ow, that hurts. I don't know yet. Again, this is all speculation, and if someone from Magic Jack wants to pull me aside afterwards, such as the dude in the corner ha- happens to know quite a bit about it, um, I will be more than happy to recant publicly on Twitter that I was wrong. Um, but yeah, I'm not making any, any assumptions that it does or doesn't, but that's my theory. Which is really scary, because that means if I had a Magic Jack sitting here right now, and your phones were connected to it, how much is it supposed to run for? <laughs> 40 to $50, I could pwn everyone's phone in here? Jesus. GSM, GSM. I'm scared. So what can we do with the ones we popped so far? Um, sadly, nothing yet. Um, I'm sorry, I just wasted the last 40 minutes of your life. I told you, this is why, first slide, I'm like, full disclosure, I'm not releasing any zero days. Um, There's nothing we can do with it yet. Um, (laughs) But we we do know that there's a strong potential because of the serial base of spoofing the GPS data, a.k.a. I go to Mexico with my femtocell. Um, And we're not really sure yet as to where the encryption of the calls are taking place. Now, based on GSM's uh, network architecture and how the femtocells play into that, we have a strong feeling that the encryption is end-to-end. So that whole intercept data is not going to take place. However, based on the information we're getting from various CDMA manufacturers of femtocells, we're noticing that there's a strong potential, potentially potential potential, um, that the encryption and decryption could be taking place on the femtocell. Don't know yet, but there's a strong potential for it. Um, again, if someone's in the room to correct me wrong, feel free to just call me out right now and be like, bullshit, I know better. Good, there wasn't one. Um, I heard we calls. haven't done memory analysis or any kind of app analysis to do like an, the IMSI catcher, but we've kind of opened up a can of worms here uh, to let everyone else kind of have that fun. Because honestly, I'm not a hardware kind of guy. Uh, I know the basics, but I don't have time to really do all this. I have other important things. Um, like what? I'm going to Chipotle, which is closed here. Man, Washington, D.C., and there's snow. So I am going to go ahead and... I have put this in here just to rant about hardware security and why this could be potentially a bad idea. And again, if GSM's doing the end-to-end encryption from the mobile station all the way back to the network, the NSS, um, you know, it's not really, it's not really a big deal because you're not going to be able to uh, get the calls. It's just the privacy issue of the IMSI catchers. Uh, But if the encryption and decryption does take place on the femtocell, which there are technologies out there that are looking to do that. There are femtocell manufacturers that are looking to do it. So basically to reduce the traffic, especially when we start getting to higher speed phones that are at, you know, the HSDPA, PDA, et cetera. I forget the exact acronym now. I'm tired. Um, Acronym. Yeah, the high speed, which is 7.2 megabits per second. If you start having to tunnel all that traffic back to corporate and then tunnel it back out and vice versa, you're going to be eating up a lot of unnecessary bandwidth, doubling your bandwidth cost. Um, so there are femtocells cells out there that they're looking at about doing the encryption and decryption right on the device. Um, I think 
Something's up. Oh, yeah. So something's up. The, re the reason this is all scary and this is different than just, hey, I got a USRP and I set up my own cell tower. And by the way, Open BTS project, awesome. I think that's really cool. And really, this is why I originally started looking at these. If you don't know what the Open BTS project is, Google it. It's a cell phone tower for third world countries to keep it cost low and offer cell coverage out there. Um, it'd be really cool to get these little cheapo products to work. Like... <laughs> The magic jack. If we get a $40 cell tower to third world countries and all you need is network connectivity, I mean, look at the cost you can take and knock down on that. Um, granted, the USRP could do a lot more cool stuff, but it's, what, 1200 with the daughter board and the USRP1? Yeah, I think that's about right, yeah. So that's why it's kind of scary with these femtocells, is that you actually have a network that's going to be passing the encryption key information back to you. And again, I don't know enough about GSM or CDMA uh, encryption, I don't know if you can keep repeating RAND to be the same RAND. Seven, 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 seven. Oh, who says that it's a random? I don't, I don't know. Um, anyone know? I know, you Googled it, though. I don't trust Wikipedia for everything. And rightfully it, so. so. It has to be true. It says I'm the mayor of Chipotle. Um, <laughs> no wonder I get banned so much. Uh, but that's what's scary about this, is that the encryption keys are, I mean, if we do have legitimate femtocells being used by legitimate providers, and the security is not hardened enough, and the encryption and decryption is being taken place on the femtocell, follow? Cool. The encryption keys are getting passed back and forth. So that's where it gets a little sketchier, because yeah, on GSM we can knock out the encryption with A50. Uh, it doesn't work for 3G, obviously, because it requires the encryption. Yeah. I'm going to open this up to, wow, it's 550 on the dot. Wow, cool. And um, cool questions. Otherwise, I'll be at the party tonight or I'll be wandering around. What? Oh, God. They're launching an attack. <laughs> I am ashamed. I'm safe. And see, the thing is, I don't know if one of those was intended as an actual question. Hi, it's vendor A. We need to talk. <laughs> All right, any questions, really? Or There yes. is a question. Cool. I'm scared. The GSM replacement chip spoofing has been done. Do you want to elaborate? Come up here. Don't make her come up here. Oh, seriously. Plug your hackerspace while you're at it. That'd be awesome. Cool. I didn't see that. Wow, I feel like an asshole. Tell the internet. Any... I can't see if... The, no, you're just standing up. You, you, no, I just see a bright light. Yeah. Potentially, yes. <laughs> I love that word, by the way. Potentially. Okay, sorry. So, yeah, for the internets, hi. Uh, the question was uh, whether or not if the Magic Jack was only for Magic Jack customers or any GSM phone, and the response was, yeah, any GSM phone would probably work on it. Uh, I believe from what I read on it is that to make it, like, pair with it, you got to be within a certain range, which is, like, six feet or so, eight feet, Ish. <laughs> Throw an amplifier on the end. Eight feet becomes. Yeah. So after pairing, it becomes. So basically, it's waiting to see. Oh, signal on this number is high enough. So this IMSI signal is high enough. All right, I'll accept a call and do the whole handshake with them now. Uh, so yeah, uh, potentially any phone. Does the internet have questions? Probably just ranting about get this dude off the stage now. As you see the followers drop from like 400 people to watching five. <laughs> yes. Fender A. You have root. Put the pieces together. 
<laughs> uh, the question was, you have uh, the, seven, the S tunnels and the SSH tunnels on there. Could you put together enough information to put connect it back and create your own. Now again, this is why I put the don't be stupid slide. I should probably go back to that slide right now during Q&A. Potentially, in a dream, um, someone I know, whatever you use when you're talking about that stuff. I want to put this slide back up just because while we do this Q&A, it probably is the most important slide to have up right now. Um, potentially, yes. I mean, you've got root and you can get anything that device has information to. Again, you know, it could be the kernel's got some kind of abstraction to it and it's root's not root. That's not what we saw, but it could be. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, potentially there's some abstraction in there, but I mean, if you got root, you got access to everything. But using that outside of the device could be considered a violation of your EULA or even doing that could be considered a violation of your EULA. I just got these devices off a of buddy who was like, here, have fun. Okay, I don't know. I don't have a contract with vendor Q and B and D and yes. Uh, going back to the uh, issue of certificates, you said there were client side certificates. Are these generated on a per device basis? Are these retrieved? Okay, so Where do these client side <laughs> come from? Okay, so the question was about the client side search where it had a client side search and then the server search for the VPN. Uh, so it looked like the cert was used for either the Stunnel or the VPN connection. I couldn't tell for sure. Again, we only had so much time to tear these apart. Um, and there's only so much we could do. A uh, certain vendor here, uh, you can't use outside of a certain test area right now. <laughs> we don't live within the test area. I live in Chicago. It's not, where was it? Uh, North Carolina and Georgia. Raleigh and Georgia, yeah. I, I don't live in those areas. Um, so really to get these devices online and actually working wasn't going to happen for one of them. So um, it appeared that we don't have multiple devices, so there's no way we can compare the certs. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Be interesting to see when more people actually start taking a chisel to it to bypass the physical tamper. I don't even know what the physical tamper does. It's, I'm worried to pull it off and just be like, have a message pop of like, you've been inside. Am I here first? Again, I couldn't get these online because I didn't register them. Does that be violating EULAs of actually registering them and getting them online? Um, I probably, f I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm probably going to get handcuffed in this. I hope to God not. I'm trying not to tread in any gray area. I'm a good guy. I'm just, I'm not trying to steal servers. I'm just trying to scream hardware security. Ah! Oh, Steve, you're going to implicate me one day. Um, I don't even mean to. I'm a good kid. We got more questions. Anyway, sorry. I'm, I'm taking time. Yes. Sweet. Sweet. Pull it up. Wait, hold. Wait, wait, wait. I can't hear. I am not hopping on this network with all. No, I. I Do it. I can see everyone like open their laptops going, yes, pull it up. <laughs> I've done enough wireless pen tests to tear it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll plug your blog. What's your blog again? Hey, Coop. H E Y C O O P dot com. Hey, Coop dot com. He's got the photos up there. I'm going to take a look when I get back from the bar tomorrow. And if you happen to see any kind of JavaScript, Java, or Flash payload on there, it is not my fault. It is his. Take a good look, guys. You may need to identify him in a lineup later. Any other questions? And I'm, feel free just to say, hey, oh, I'm over here. You didn't see me. Yes. Uh, we didn't do really like kind of memory analysis of it. it. We did notice that they were mounting as read-only on a lot of partitions um, for the one we did get access to. Um, were you able to mount it as read-write at all or no? No. You, one, you would know more about that. One was completely read-only, um, but it did have one chip that was read-and-write um, that would repopulate once it made a connection to the VPN and download all the new files. 
which would be stored in temp for a short amount of time as well. So there were some certificates that we could grab for a short time, um, but that's about it. So, cool. I, I can't hear you. Why? Some guy on the internet is claiming to be our boss. Hi, Nick. Nick. How's it going? Hi, Rob. I'm going to use first names only. Yeah, is it Nick or Rob? I hope I, I, hope I don't get in trouble. <laughs> oh, God. I know. It's, <laughs> we're, we're past this. Can't delete the internet. Dan did. Well, he tried. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We are looking at tunneling uh, femtocell over DNS. That might be our next talk. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. We love you. Any other questions? Seriously, I mean, and if you're too awkward to ask, feel free to come up here, or I'm going to probably grab... I don't even know where to get a good... Other than Five Guys, which is a hall. If anyone wants to recommend a good place for me to eat, other than Chipotle, because it's closed. Aww. McDonald's, but they don't have McRibs. A good place to eat. All right. Cool. Um, you guys are free to go. Drink. <laughs> what party. about White Castle? Hacker Halo, Schmooganography. You, you almost hit Dan. Yeah, there is, I think. That's Ben Ray. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll talk to you on Twitter, yeah.